Muga Fish Farm started in the way back in 2010 and started as a grow-out farm where we had four ponds. Then in 2013, we actually graduated to the level where we could be able to produce our own fingerlings. Muga Fish Farm right now has around uh, 57 ponds. We have uh, three sections in the farm. We have the, the nursery section, brooder section, and then we have the hatchery. We have grown this far because of uh, different innovations. Because we know time is coming that we, we might not even have the resources we have now. And uh, some of the resources we have might be expensive if we don't adapt to the climatic change. So one of the areas we have adopted so much, one is to come up with uh, the liner ponds uh, so that we can reduce the uptake of uh, water. We have come up with uh, the recirculating system so that we use as little water as possible. And uh, also we have adopted the use of renewable uh, energy where we are uh, doing purely solar in our farm. And also use uh, modern farming technologies like aquaponics. In aquaponics is one area where you don't need a lot of water to grow your vegetable. The recirculation system we have is also very cost effective because we are using solar system to do the recirculation. Including in our hatchery, we decided as a farm that we are going renewable uh, energy. So everything in this farm is using a solar system. So we decided to adopt solar so that we can produce at very minimal cost and still be able to compete in the market. This is our um, uh, hatchery. It's an innovation because we, when we were starting to do the production, we realized that uh, getting a hatchery was too expensive. So because we were starting and we didn't have money, we decided to innovate on hatchery. So what we did is that we created a filtration uh, system where the water comes, it is filtered into the incubation jugs. So these are the incubation jugs where we place the eggs as we get them from the brooders. And then once the eggs are hit in here, uh, this water must be running 24-7 for three to five days, and then they start hatching. So when uh, they hatch, it, it comes in a way that, uh, like now, when once the nini have hatched, the water moves with them to the collection trough. We introduced a, a recirculating system where there is a pump in here, and then from the pump, the water goes into the filter, into the uh, incubation jugs, then back into the troughs, and then there's a, the water flows back again after some filtration underneath, back to the tank and then it goes back again. It's a very simple recirculating system and we realize that it's working for us very well just like the modern hatchery which is good from outside. So we hope that farmers would be able to adopt such kind of technology because this hatchery alone can give us up to 100,000 fingerlings at a go but each jug can take up to between 20 to 30,000 eggs. We also have come with a, a simple technology which you can uh, use to have your fish next to your house. So we decided that we have a response system. This one you can even do in somebody's uh, chamber and move with it whenever you want. It's a system also which you can use next to the house and trap roof catchment water. You can use this to do your ponds or use it for your small garden. This is our level one nursery. Immediately from the hatchery, we bring the hatchlings here, where we do actually the sex reversal so that they become all males. And it takes around 28 days to do that. So we have the water, a recirculating tank, then the water comes through this pipe. Once this pond is full, then it releases to the filtration chamber. So the filtration chamber will clean that water from, from the pond. And because it comes, the water is released from below, so it gets the dirty water out. It is cleaned and goes back into 
the recirculating tank. So that system can allow us to reuse the water several times. This is also a, a technology which uh, uh, we are introducing in aquaculture, the aquaponic system. Though here we are not using it for commercial purposes but for filtration. But it is a way also where you can now integrate fish farming and, and uh, horticulture. So the effluents from the pond comes and you can use them uh, in the aquaponic system to have your, uh, your burgers. This is our level two uh, nursery. The level two ponds are a little bit bigger. We give them enough space so that they can start growing to bigger size so that they can now sell them. And at this time, they are supposed to be fed on a 40% crude protein feed for like uh, also another one, one month or some few weeks. Then now we can start selling them. We calculate the amount of feed they need per day. And at this stage, they are given feed four times in a day. When we bring new fish into the farm, we don't mix it with other fish which is in the farm. We first of all quarantine it here for a month or two. Until we are sure that it is disease free is when we can mix it with other fish. In the level one nursing, that's where we do the sex reversal. Once we release that water, we would not wish that water to leave this, this farm because the effect of the hormone might, be, might take longer than a few more days. So what we do is that when we release that water, it comes into the dumping site. Then we need a bit of uh, some plants because this one disintegrates that hormone very fast. Within just a few days, it is done. We realize that instead of just leaving it like that, we can put a few catfish. One of the major challenge we have in uh, fish farming is uh, the feed. That's why we are even coming with the black soldier fly production so that we can re decrease or reduce the cost of our feed. That is an area which needs quite a bit of investment. The other challenge is the, the challenge of water quality. Yeah, because we depend, our major source is the river, and when it rains, we cannot control what is happening up there. It's, it comes with a lot of mud. So we have tried to have areas where now, like this one, where we have to sediment it and all that, but we still need a situation whereby we can have clean water throughout the, throughout the year. The other challenge is that uh, we need to be able to uh, increase our productivity by improving on the aeration, water aeration. And this will require quite a bit of investment in terms of renewable power until we come up with innovative ideas to be able to do a lot of aeration, recirculation and all that, we require quite a bit, a bit in investment on renewable power. Everybody loves fish and everything loves fish. <laughs> we still have uh, predators, it's still a challenge because even like we are dealing so much with the uh, the fingerlings. We still have also human predation, which is still a challenge. There's a time we lost almost uh, almost uh, 200 of our brooders in one night. Uh, that is what forced us now to even install CCTV in the farm to be able to monitor so that when you are here or not, you can be able to monitor what is in the farm. But uh, the challenge of birds are still there. The challenges of different predations uh, are still there. But uh, we have learned through experiences to be able to mitigate some of these things. And now we are somewhere we can say that we cannot be held back by challenges of predation. Mm -hmm.